Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Empowered Living Podcast by Empowered Life Church. We hope it blesses you. Good morning. It's so wonderful to see you guys. I'm super excited. Um, Ivan is traveling and he's ministering somewhere. So Lord bless Ivan as he's out. And yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to talk about truth this morning. The Lord has been burning in me truth and what is truth and what does truth accomplish, right? Truth is anything God says, his word, the Bible, the things he created all come into agreement with God. It's black or white, right? It's true or it's false. It does not change. That means truth is in alignment with God. So first, we need to have truth ruling and reigning in our lives. You see, truth is a person. His name is Jesus. God created truth, and he is truth. John 1.14 says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw his glory, glory as the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. The word, the truth, became flesh and dwelt among us. He is truth. John 14, 6 says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. There is life in God. There is truth in God because he, that truth draws us to God the Father because the Father is the one that gives us our identity, right, as children, as sons and daughters, that truth of we are his kids. Truth reveals to us. His truth reveals who the Father is and who Jesus is. The truth reveals who we are and our purpose, who we are in Christ, right? Galatians 4, 6 through 7 says, Because you are sons and daughters, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. We are heirs. We are his children. We're not slaves. We're not held in captive. We are free. And we get to have that relationship with him where we cry, Abba, Father, Daddy, Papa God. That's how intimate we get to be with him. That truth draws us into his presence, into the awe of who God is. Crying, Abba. That's what we get to receive. Knowing him more, and we receive life by knowing him more. An everlasting life where rivers of living water flow out of us. We become life because he is life in us. He is truth in us. Now, just like the spirit is wisdom and revelation, he is the spirit of truth. John 16, 13 says, But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will disclose to you what is to come the spirit of truth. He didn't leave us orphans on the earth. He he did it, right? He, He sent his spirit so we could be living temples of the living God. And he's guiding us. The spirit of truth is guiding us in every area of our lives. The spirit reveals all things, even the mysteries of God, the mysteries of God. going to read. This is a long scripture. It's 1 Corinthians 
2, 10 through, or 2 through 10. So 1 Corinthians 2, 2 through 10. For I determined to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my message and my preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that your faith would not rest on the wisdom of men, but on the power of God. Yet we do not speak wisdom among those who are mature, a wisdom, however, not of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are passing away. But we speak God's wisdom in a mystery, a hidden wisdom which God predestined before the ages to our glory, the wisdom which none of the rulers of this age has understood. For if they had understood it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But just as it is written, things which eyes has not seen and ear has not heard, and which have not entered the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him. Now, I had so many teachers throughout life stop there and say, you will never know. We'll never know the mysteries of God. We'll never know. No eye has seen, no ear has heard. But the last verse is one of the most important. It says, for to us, God revealed them through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. We get to know the depths of God, who he is, the mystery. The Holy Spirit wants to reveal truth and mysteries and gives us understanding of the depths. And that leads us to freedom, right? Truth is freedom. John 8. 32 says, then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. The truth sets us free. Jesus sets us free. You see, truth releases you to be free. It takes you from a place of bondage and captivity and releases you into the fullness of who God created you to be. He created you to be There is a purpose. There is a destiny. Our first destiny, right? Our first destination is Jesus. Because we get to receive that. We get to receive the truth. We get to receive Jesus. And that's our first destiny. And then it goes further. He takes it further because we were created for a purpose. So we were lost, right? Without truth, we're lost. Sin in the enemy keeps us in a place of never quite getting there, never good enough, right? You can never be good enough. You can be better, right? You can do better. You can work harder, work harder on yourself, reach that enlightenment, that true enlightenment, or or the enemy, the sin and enemy holds us captive, right? It holds people captive in addiction, Captive to lies, captive in darkness and fear, controlled by fear and limited in who you truly are and who God created you to be, limiting God. But God wants us to have freedom, and it's received through truth, the truth of what Jesus did and what he has given us, right? He's given us so much. Yeah. Our God, the truth revealed to us that we were stuck, right? Maybe stuck in sin, held captive. We needed Jesus to set us free. And then the freedom gives us a choice, right? That freedom. We get to choose whether to accept the truth or not. We get to choose him. We get to choose truth. Truth and love demanded a choice. And now we have the powerful truth of what Jesus did, right? He conquered sin and death on the cross. When he went to the cross, he set things right. 
He died for our sins, took the keys of the enemy and gave them to us, the keys of the enemy. He said, no longer does he have authority. I have authority and I'm giving it to you, each of you through the spirit of truth. We have authority. We have authority through the spirit of truth. We get to choose, right? God is so good. That is truth. His unconditional love. We receive his unconditional love. He brought us back into right relationship as sons and daughters. Nothing can separate us from his love. Nothing can separate us. Nothing. Now we receive a freedom through truth to be completely who he created you to be without chains and lies holding you back, without those limits. He wants to break off limits. He wants you to step into who he created you to be. He created you to be free. He created you to be free. He created you with purpose. He intricately made you first to be loved as sons and daughters. And then he says, I created you to make a mark. I created you to make a mark on the earth. See, we come to life when we have the spirit of truth ruling and reigning in our lives. It brings us to life. It brings us into freedom. It brings us into who we are called to be, that destiny. To make the mark he's called us to make. He has called us to make a mark. Through the prophetic, we release words of the Lord. Or through writing, we release words, powerful words, right? The truth. We release that truth, those powerful words of truth to those around us. Through writing, through praying for people in our jobs, in the marketplace, we get to release truth. Isaiah 55:11 says, "So this is the Lord speaking. So will my words be which goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. It goes out and accomplishes. It goes out and accomplishes. Our words, our prophetic words, our words of encouragement don't fall void. They're not empty. God partners with us to release truth on the earth, to write the books we've called to write, right? Yeah. I got to partner with God in this last season to write a book with, filled with the Spirit, Filled with the spirit of truth, I chose, I'm, I'm going to write this book with the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to release truth through it. But I'm going to do it in a way that's going to reach a generation that has been deceived by the enemy who has spoken lies over them. Right? And I'm like, I'm going to partner with you, God. And I get to... I, reviews are coming in for my book, and it's, it's awesome because people are like, your book has truth in it. I'm like, yes! Like, thank you, God! Thank you that people are seeing truth. You know, love conquering fear, overcoming fear, light overcoming darkness. And I wrote it in a way that it wasn't just for Christians. I wanted it to be missional. I wanted it to get into schools and to libraries, and it, sometimes the Lord calls us to be you know, gentle as doves, but as cunning or wise as serpents. And sometimes we do. We we put those things out there and to sneak in. And um, I got this review from, she's another author. She's really young. And I think she's either 19 or 20. 
And um, she left us a re review. She's like, this is the best book I've read in a really, really long time. She's like, I struggle with fear. And she's like, and I was so inspired and so encouraged by this fantasy you wrote. And it was just brought so much joy because I'm like, yes, our words go out and accomplish. Your words you speak through the spirit of truth will go out and accomplish. Your encouraging words, your prayers over people, they do not return void because we're partnered with the spirit of truth. They are going out. Those prayers are going out and accomplishing what God has called it to accomplish. And it's not returning void. God is so good. I'm so thankful he chose to partner with us, that he gave us the choice to partner with him. Is God asking you to make a mark on the earth for his glory? We need to be asking, Lord, oh, thank you. You didn't know I'm a crier. <laughs> I feel deeply. <sighs> oh, is God asking you to make a mark on the earth for his glory? We need to be asking, Lord, what mark do you want me to do? What mark do you want me to leave on my kids? What mark do you want me to leave on my neighbor, this generation, Lord? We're called. We're warriors. We're called. God, he's wanting us to live from a place of victory, right? That's where we live from, from a place of victory. And we get to partner with him to do great things on the earth. He wants to release truth through all of us. And nothing you say or do can disqualify you from God's love and forgiveness unless you choose to remain separate. And the enemy, he wants you to remain separate, right? He wants the world to remain separate from him. And he gives the world a counterfeit. I had this lady during one of my book signings in Ashland. And um, she came up and she was talking to me about the book. And it was great. And, and then all of a sudden, she's like, her eyes light up let me give you a reading. And she ran to go get her tarot cards. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> and my friend Lexi was standing there. And I look at her. I'm going to give her a reading right back. <laughs> she, but also, I'm like, Lord, I want to speak truth. Help me speak truth and love. How do I speak, Lord? And I didn't want to hurt her, you know, because she was doing it because she, she, she was loving me. She was being kind in her heart. And she came back with the cards, and I'm like, okay, here I go. Well, I don't believe, actually, in these. I don't believe these. You know, I believe that we're created with a direct connection with the creator. I'm all, I don't, we, you know, I don't really believe in this. She's like, oh, they're not, they're not bad. I'm like, okay, but I have a direct connection. I'd love to give you a reading. <laughs> and she's all, she's all, oh, okay. And she had already pulled a card out. And I felt like the Lord was going to show her just, you know, you don't need these cards. The Lord wants to connect. The creator of the universe wants to connect with people. He truly does. And he wants to love them. And she couldn't help but read the card. She tried, but she couldn't. She, she just had to just look and read the card. She tried to not, but she ended up just using the card. And I, and I gave her a word directly from the Lord, and she received it, and it called out destiny in her, like who she was created to be, that she is a lover of people, that she is kind and loving. So the, I, I feel like the Lord was showing her, you don't need these cards. Like, this is what it looks like to have a real relationship with me and to speak words of life from me, the truth. And it's not always easy, right, the truth, because I didn't want to hurt her, but I'm like, I have to speak truth, that these are false, you know? God is good. And I gave her a hug after the book signing. She was still there with her tarot cards and crystals. And I gave her a hug, and I said, you know what, Ramona, I'm going to be praying for you. And she's like, oh, okay, thank you. You know. 
God, God loves them. God loves them. The enemy has given them a counterfeit. A counterfeit. You don't need crystals and tarot cards to connect with the creator. You were created to connect with the creator. You were created with that void of, oh, I need the spirit of truth in my life. I need that. You were created to have that desire. That's why they're searching. That's why they're searching. They want that connection with the spirit because there is. There's that void in them that's just crying out for, for God, for purpose, for guidance, right? He is, and the enemy's a liar. And he covers his lies with just a little bit of truth, you know, a little bit of truth so it deceives. Because there is power. You look at, like, Moses, when he went to go set the Israelites free, he brought his staff and he threw it before Pharaoh and it turned into a snake. And then Pharaoh's like, ah, I, I know this one. Like, he calls his magicians and he... And his magicians come out and throw their staffs, and they turn into snakes. Oh, what? Does the enemy have some power? Yeah, he has a little bit of power. But the snake ate the magician's staffs, both of them. <laughs> Our God is more powerful. Our God trumps the enemy. He says, nope, I'm going to stand on that snake's head, right? I'm, I am over all. I am more powerful. Yeah, you can see some power in that. Yeah, psychics may be able to read your mail, but it's not drawing you to the creator. It's not drawing you. They're either using the demonic to do it, and Paul encountered that too in the book of Acts. There was a girl following, was it, was it Paul or was it Peter? Um, was Paul. He, there was a psychic following him around saying, this these are men of God. You know, they were telling truth. But it wasn't drawing people to God. It would have drawn them to her. Oh, she knows all, right? And Paul turned around and rebuked. He saw, he discerned, like, this isn't a, a good spirit. This is not a spirit of truth. This is a demonic. And rebuked the spirit out of her, and she wasn't able to read, read anyone. But she was held captive by a demonic spirit. She was being used. Men were profiting off of her. They were using her for money. And that's what it does. Psychics, all those, you pay money. You pay money for those things. But it's not fulfilling you. It will never fulfill you like God can fulfill you. (laughs) The prophetic was made to serve the body of Christ, to build her up, right? To make her powerful children, to release life and love and healing on the earth, to release that joy on the earth. And the enemy wants people separated from their truth. That every person has a direct connection to the source, to God. Every person. And you don't need crystals or tarot cards, right? You need the creator. God's the one who created nature and crystals and the prophetic, and the enemy stole the prophetic and twisted it. He wants you to have a direct connection to the life giver, the healer. Even religion tries to separate people. You know, you look at Catholicism. Oh, you have to go to the priest. Oh, you can't have that direct connection. Oh, even you're not good enough. Yeah. Like, I grew up just feeling separated from God at times because I heard it so much. You're just a sinner saved by grace. Oh, I'm just a sinner. God, I, ugh. You know, you get stuck in that place of, I'm just a sinner. Yes, we are sinners, and we are saved by grace, but that's not our identity, right? Our identity is in Christ. Through the Father, we're sons and daughters. I'm so thankful the Lord breaks those things off of us and continues to move us from glory to glory, right? Closer to who he created us to be. 
I had this dream a few years back when God was calling me to be bold, bold like a lion. And in this dream, there was an outreach, and it was like this stadium that was outside, and all of a sudden, this guy falls down and starts shaking like he's manifesting a demon. And I stand up, I'm all, oh, and this lady, she runs over. And in the dream, I see that she, she's a witch. Like, I know she's a witch in the dream. And she runs over to him and, let me help him, let me help him. And I'm all, no, the Lion of Judah fights our battles, not you. And I was just like, ah, oh, yes. He fights our battles, right? And this huge lion formed in the sky, and everyone was looking up like this roaring lion, and I roared at her, but it wasn't my roar. It was God's roar through me, and it was just like, oh, God, that's who you are. That's who you are. That is truth, that we're powerful, and we overcome the enemy through the blood of Jesus, and he roars through us. And the enemy can't stand. The enemy can't stand. I woke up from that dream just feeling so empowered and inspired, knowing that the enemy has no power. He has no power. And that my God is roaring like a lion, that he fights my battles, no one else. And I woke up, too, saying, we need to take back what the enemy has stolen, right? He has stolen witches, psychics, all these. They have stolen what God created, the prophetic. I'm like, no, no, uh-uh. I am going to release it into the world, right? I'm going to release truth. And we did that outreach the other day, too, which... um. It was awesome. God is so good. We set up a board that said organic spiritual alignment in Ashland. And we got tons of people. (laughs) They were hungry. And we declared truth. We were giving them prophetic words. We were inviting the spirit of truth into, into their midst. They're like, yeah, the spirit of truth. Yes. Yeah. Because he is real. And he called out destiny. He called out, like, words of knowledge. And these people were filled with joy. And some of them have walked away from the Lord. They walked away because they didn't get to encounter a real God, that real relationship, whatever, you know, the enemy stole it or held them captive, or they were hurt, hurt by the church, hurt by religion. And God said, I'm going to heal that. I'm going to release destiny and truth over them. And we got to invite them to the church. We do this all the time. (laughs) right yeah God is so good and where we set up I don't know if you guys knew this the Millers were with us I set up right where uh, a few years ago we went out where that lady was doing tarot cards (laughs) she was giving words and I'm like we're gonna take back what the enemy has stolen right and we moved in (laughs) God is good. Oh, man. He empowers us. He empowers us to be who we are called to be. He's taking it back, right? He's taking it back, but he needs us. He needs us to take it back. What the enemy has stolen, he needs us. He's not going to do it for us. He partners with us. The world has been deceived by lies. And those things, you know, they can provide a temporary fix. But you will still be striving. You will still not have that void filled, that unity and alignment that we're called to have through the Holy Spirit. And we're not meant to just live good lives, right? Oh, just live a good life. Like karma, you know. Karma sounds good, right? Be good, and good things will happen to you. Live a good, kind life, and good things will happen. But what about the kids that are being trafficked, the poor and destitute? You know, did they deserve that? Did they have a past life that they deserve that? No, they didn't have a past life. 
where they deserve to be tortured? Like, karma is a lie. No. What did God say? Did he say, karma will handle it? (laughs) No. (laughs) No, he acted on truth and moved in compassion and love. He looked at the prostitute, and they were about to stone her, and he loved her. See, he, he saw who she was created to be, that she was created to be more than just a prostitute, right? And he didn't condemn her. He did tell her to stop sinning, right? That is truth, because he knew who she was created to be, and he loved her. He loved her. And the man on the cross, you know, he was getting what he deserved. He was a murderer. He was probably a really terrible person, right? Karma was definitely, you know, happening. (laughs) But what did God say on the cross? He spoke truth and love over the man. He He saw a repentant heart, and he believed. The man on the cross believed that he He was God that he was Jesus. And God said, you, your sin is not greater than my love and truth. You will see paradise, right? You will see paradise. That's what God says. He forgives. He restores. It's not too late, right? His sin is not greater than God's truth, right? And forgiveness. The things in life are not too big for God, right? No lie of the enemy. No lie of the enemy can come against God's truth when you have it in you, right? There's an analogy, and I'm sure people have heard this analogy. Someone bakes a pan of brownies, and they put a little bit of poo in it. (laughs) And... It's just a little, right? It's not going to hurt you, but it's somewhere in there. (laughs) It won't hurt you. It's just a little, right? Right? No. No. Right? Lies are still lies. Lies are still lies. Truth is still truth. Sin is still sin. You know, a half truth is still just half right? Truth is still truth. He wants us to live a life of truth, to live in the spirit of truth, to walk in the spirit of truth. God does not want us living stuck halfway. He wants us all in, fully free, fully alive, walking empowered in who he called us to be, guided by the spirit of truth, No sin is too big. No lie is too strong. God desires his kids to know him intimately and to know they are powerful and free. Now, truth releases hope, too, right? Truth releases hope. If you're going through something hard or something that seems hopeless, right? God speaks truth. God wants to release truth over those situations. Um, I'll share a story. I have permission for my husband to share it (laughs) because it's about us in our life. Um, Damon, when we, we were married a year and we went through a really hard season, um, his mom was killed in a car accident and He did get to see her and say goodbye to her, but it wrecked him. It wrecked him. And not only that, the prayer he prayed the day before was, God, show me your real. And then that happened. That shook his faith. It shook his faith, right? It was one of the hardest times of our life. Because my husband was grieving. He was angry at God. He was angry. How could he take my mom? And it was just, and it wasn't just like it was his mom. It was like losing both parents because he was raised by a single mom. So it was like, 
he lost both. He was an orphan. He was only a child. And so he just felt, you know, he, in that place of anger, of hating God, wanting to nothing to do with God. And I was like, Lord, help us, right? Help us. This is hopeless. I can't help my husband. All I could do was pray and cry out, Lord, I pray for him. Lord, help us. Help my husband. Bring him back to you. And I heard the Lord say so loudly in my mind, he's going to be stronger than he ever was after this is over. And I'm like, what? He's going to be stronger? I couldn't see it. I couldn't see it, but God saw it. And in that moment, he filled my heart with hope. And I knew I wasn't alone. I wasn't alone. And there was hope. My, my God knew the man he was called to be. And that the enemy wasn't going to speak lies in his life and keep him pinned down. Right? God spoke hope over our situation. And that's what God does. He speaks hope and truth over our situations. Nothing is too big. Nothing is hopeless or helpless. No person is hopeless or helpless because our God is with his children, right? He's with his children. And he did. The Lord restored his faith and he was stronger than he ever was. And we, we got through that season and it was like, wow, like how did we get through that? You know, how did, how did our marriage survive that? Just, you know, it was hard, too. It was hard. I'm not going to say it wasn't hard. <laughs> but God is our strength in those situations when terrible things happen. God is our strength, and we lean on him, and that's what I did. I just I leaned into God, and I didn't stop praying, and I just I kept leaning into him. I felt like, oh, I can't go forward. Lord, this is so hard. This is so hard. And he's like, it's okay. I'm here. It's okay. You don't have to be doing and doing all this stuff. He's like, just be here with me and know I'm here with you and that there's hope. And so I rested in that. I rested in that. And we worked hard. We worked hard. But we partnered with God, right? And he was our strength. And he got us through. God is so good. God is so good when we stand on God's truth, right? I had to believe in his truth and trust in his promises. Truth is powerful and immovable. And that's what we stand on. That's what we receive. We become powerful and immovable because he's in us. That truth is in us. Truth takes down lies of the enemy, brings order to chaos, sets arguments right, and sets us free from the bonds of deception. I didn't have to believe the lies. Right? We are overcomers. We are overcomers. We are warriors. We are empowered. We carry truth. Truth is a person, and his name is Jesus. That's who we carry. Jesus, he's all, he is all and in all. He wants to rule and remain in our lives. He wants to be number one, fully surrendered, enlightened by him, aligned with him. He wants to speak truth in every area of our lives. Is there an area where there's a lie? Is there an area or situation where God needs to speak truth and hope over it? It's not hopeless. It's, and that person isn't helpless because God is true to his promises. He is true to his promises. The Lord told me one time, he's all where your focus is, is where your strength is. Are you focused 
on the one who is life and truth. He is life and truth. We fix our eyes on God because he is our strength. What are you focused on? Are you focused on bills and worrying? Are you focused, you know, on the money or the situation that seems impossible, right? God wants to speak truth over that. We just need to fix our eyes on him, right? The word for this year is alignment, God, right? God is aligning us. He's adjusting us. It's not always easy. It's not always easy to say, I surrender this because I want to be aligned with you. I want truth, real truth in my life. I'll read one last scripture. This is John 4, 23 through 24. But an hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such people, the Father seeks to be his worshipers. God is spirit, and those who worship him worship in spirit and in truth. We worship in that alignment, in that spirit, aligned with him, in that full unity with God. We worship him in spirit and truth, right? Truth of who he is and what God did for us. That's truth. And we get to worship. We get to have that awe of God of who he is when we worship. And he reveals who we are. God is so good. Truly aligned with the spirit. And we are an expression of God, right? We express him everywhere we go. We are radiating his glory and light. We radiate him. We radiate truth as the temple of the living God. We express him everywhere we go. Don't let the enemy put a basket on your light, right? Hide it. No, he created you to shine. He created you to make a mark to break out of that cycle, right? Don't get stuck in a cycle. Don't get stuck in the the cycle of the lies in the mind, right? God wants to break over, break that. He wants to break that, the lies, the lies of the enemy that keep us stuck, right? He wants you to have freedom and truth. Yeah. Yeah. He wants you to make your mark with him. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Empowered Living Podcast by Empowered Life Church. We hope it blessed you. Subscribe so you can stay up to date with our latest podcasts. If you'd like to learn more about us, check us out at facebook.com slash ELC talent or check out our website, www.empoweredlifechurch.org. Have a blessed week.